Welcome to another video from CardboardEast.com. My name is Jay. I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. Today, we're going to make a special video and we're going to focus on just one designer. So today, we're going to talk about the top eight games from Japanese publisher Sashi and Sashi. Hey guys, I want to take a quick little minute here to <laughs> apologize. Uh, my neighbor has a baby and the baby's crying and I feel kind of guilty about that. Also, it's raining outside, so you might hear some stuff in the background, you might not. Either way, I apologize and I gotta record tonight, so it's happening whether they, 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 they like it or not. Now, if you've never heard of Sashi and Sashi, then wow, you are in for a treat. Uh, Sashi and Sashi has been around for six years. They are a small publisher, just basically a husband and wife team. Sashi does all the design work and his wife, uh, Takako Takarai, I think I said that right, she does all the artwork. Some common adjectives that have been used to describe their games have been cute, quirky, kitsch, I don't know if that's a thing, but as you can tell, like the way these games look, looks very different than I think what you think of as a Western game. I'm going to talk about all eight of them. I'm going to go from number eight to number one in terms of what I think are the best designs. And without further ado, let's get it rolling. Why, why is it a top eight and not a top ten? Well, these he's only had eight games. Number eight, the Blend Coffee Lab. Now, I don't hate Blend Coffee Lab. I just think it's my least favorite of his games. Blend Coffee Lab is a trick-taking game that plays two to four, but really it's for a four-player game, as was with most trick-taking games. You are making cups of coffee, and you're gonna make three sets of coffee each round. Each cup of coffee is gonna consist of four cards, and you're gonna make sure that they match, you get certain points, yada, yada, yada. But what's interesting in this game is that usually for a trick-taking game, you play a card, and then everyone has to match and follow suit. This one, it's the exact opposite. I play a card and everyone else has to not follow suit. You have to play a different suit that has already been played. And then after that's done, whoever wins a trick begins a draft and the players begin drafting the cards. Some people, myself included, feel that the draft kind of eats away at the trick taking part of the game because you trick, draft, trick, draft, and you do that I guess like 30 times throughout the course of one game, and I feel that it's a little bit much. The only other negative that I have with this is that it can be, it can be a little bit frustrating to teach. And the reason why is because of the difference between four and three players. Four players, you use all four suits. Not a problem, almost. Three players, you use three of the suits, and uh, the red suit is just a problem because the red suit has or two parts of a cup of coffee on it. So for a four player game, it's one quarter, one quadrant. And then for a three player game, you move it to the center and flip the card over and that becomes the bottom of the cup. When I'm teaching this game to new people, they they, know, they always get confused. Like, is this a three player, is it a four player? I don't know. However, if you are looking for a trick taking game that's a little bit different, a little bit more gamery, I think that this is something that's really exciting. And it's about coffee. Who doesn't love coffee? Number seven is coffee roaster. Now, if this coffee roaster looks different than your coffee roaster, you have the one with the different arts. I've seen that one for sale, and I just, I can't, I just can't buy it. Not to say that the art is bad. I think the new art design is fantastic. But for me, Sashi and Sashi games feel weird if I don't see Takako Takarai's art on it, because she has this great, simple look to all the games, and it kind of reminds me of that Belgian comic Tintin, and I, I kind of grew up on Tintin, so I don't know, I just really like the artwork. Moving on! I don't know what else there is to say about Coffee Rose that hasn't been said before. This is an excellent solo player game, and it's really light too, it plays from 10 to 30 minutes. I will say that more than any other coffee-themed game I've ever played. This one abstracts the idea of roasting a cup of coffee better than anything else. You're just bag building, and every time you pull out little chits, you can combine them together, you can split up the beans, and you can make a stronger roast, or you can split them up. You will gain smoke in there, you want to get the smoke out. You could unlock special abilities, all to make, at the end of the game, 
the perfect cup of coffee. And there's different kinds of coffee that you can build, and so it can be a little bit challenging. So it's not always the same game. Sashi and Sashi is one of the few publishers where I like all of their games. I'm curious to see if that'll change over time because they've only, <laughs> only had eight games. If you like solo games, I can't recommend Coffee Roaster enough, and it's a lunchbox game. It plays in 10 to 30 minutes. Number six is Let's make a bus route. What? I know, I know. Don't kill me yet. Yeah, please, please wait. Wait just a minute. I know it's very controversial, me putting this this low. A lot of people love this game. I am not one of them. I really like this game. I really like Roland Rights, and this is probably one of my favorite Roland Rights, but I kind of would lean to something else if I had to choose. But the reason why I want to talk about this game in particular is that when it first came out, it was very different, different than anything else. You have this map of Kyoto, because Sashi is from Kyoto, and you're making a bus route, and you're drawing onto this map about where it goes, and everyone else has other buses, and you're trying to have like this almost Tron battle. Yes, I know what Tron is. I'm very old. You can go over other people's buses and create traffic and get negative points, but you can never go over your own, just like Tron. Yes, I know what Tron is. I'm very old. Let's make a bus route place two to five. The problems that I have with this edition, and there's only there's only four editions, I believe. There's the original, which is this one, English and Japanese. There's one that's Korean. There's one that's a green box that's the same as this, the exact same thing, except it's just a green box. They did it for like a special, I don't know, new edition. And there's a new edition by Yellow. I think that if you want to get this game, I would recommend you get the one by Yellow, not this one. The reason why is because this one only has one map. It's double-sided, but it's, you know, the same map. Also, I don't know if the camera can see this, but the map kind of begins to warp. When it warps, it creates a problem, and it's a little bit shiny. So depending on what type of room you're in or what kind of lighting it is, the markers can get sometimes a little bit hard to see, and if it bends too much, it's kind of... Uh, even more difficult to see. The new one by Yellow has two maps. You have like London and you have England. And I, I find that funny because Yellow is a French company and it's like, we don't want to play a game that takes place in Paris because you know, who wants to do that? Also, what I really like about the Yellow Edition is that the roll and write, the write being part of the game, has been replaced by wooden components and sticks. And I think that's actually a lot more clear on the table. I really like uh, Let's Make a Bus Route. Uh, my problems with it have been just kind of functional overall. If you want to pick up a copy of this, I recommend getting the yellow version. Number five is Take the Eight Court. What? This is Sashi and Sashi's first game ever. However, this is the second edition and it comes in this nice uh, bigger box. The first edition came in a box you know, roughly about this size. You want to get this one. This one's just much nicer. The components are a lot nicer and it has a two player variant as well. The biggest problem that I have with this game is that ah, it's, it's really a four player game. You can play it with three, but it's really a four player game and it really shines best as four. This is a really interesting trick taking game because the way it's designed is that there really are two suits in the game. There's the color and that's like the theme of the music, like jazzy, earthy, and then there's the notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H? G. Oh, I'm not a musician. And you can play matching suits or you play matching notes. And I find this really interesting. And when you play matching notes, depending on who you match, whether you match the person who played first or a previous player, it'll change the trump suit of the cards. So as you play this game, it's very tactical where the value of your cards will constantly shift throughout the game. And I find that really, really fascinating. On top of that, there are these improvisation things where you play it and you trigger an improvisation and then everyone takes the cards and flip it over and you play another uh, round. And then you, if you win that, then you win two tricks. Or you can cause another improvisation and then the winner of that wins three tricks all at once. And it becomes really, really fascinating. And it's only 30 minutes. And I think that if you're looking for a trick-taking game that's, again, <laughs> pretty different, uh, both of these are excellent trick-taking games. If I had to choose one, I would easily go with this one. I like jazz a little bit more than coffee. Whoa, did I just say that out loud? And I would definitely get this one. This one is just really cool. The inside and the components look absolutely fantastic. 
I'll probably do a review of this one in the future if you want it. And again, that's take the A chord. Number four is in front of the elevators. This one has kind of seen better days. It's a little bit faded. It's because I've taken that out quite a lot. In front of the elevators probably is the most approachable game out of all the games that he's done. His designs are all quirky. I mean, you have this idea of sharing the bus or creating a bus route. You have one where you're brewing the perfect cup of coffee. You're playing jazz as trick takers, and then you're uh, making cups of coffee in this one. And in this one, you're <laughs> you're just about queuing in front of an elevator. <laughs> and, but what's interesting is that this is something that I guess most people can relate to if they live in a city environment. Okay, some people can relate to it. But it's the idea that when you go out to an elevator, you don't want to be the first one on the elevator because you're going to be trapped at the corner. You want to kind of be towards, you want to be the last person to get on the elevator. So that way you're the first to get off. And that's what this whole game is about. You only have a hand of two cards and you choose one and you play it. And there are three elevators. Every family consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people, you have grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, brother, sister, and the little baby girl. And what's interesting is that each family member can cut in front of another family member. So grandma cuts in front of grandpa, grandpa cuts in front of mom, mom cuts in front of dad, dad cuts in front of daughter, daughter cuts in front of son, uh, son cuts in front of a uh, little girl. Little girl is really interesting because if she gets to a line by herself, another family member has to go from the front of the line all the way to the back. Kind of thematic in a way. My favorite rule in this game is known as the cafe rule. So if you put the third dad in a queue or the third mom in a queue, it's almost as if the the other character's like, Oh, Jill, is that you, Sarah? Oh my gosh. Oh, Elizabeth, I love that trip. I'm not, I'm not. And they all go to a cafe together. I just think that's I just think that's absolutely hilarious. And I guess usually when I play this game with people, I guess we kind of like lie back that out of this I guess it, maybe it's just me. Oh, Sarah, I just love that dress. Anyway, this is a very approachable game. I have played most of these games with kids, and by far this is the one that they like the most, just because it's just simple and it's very fun. Uh, there is a two-player variant. I don't like it. There is a, but I like the three and the four-player game a lot. And that has been in front of the elevators. Number three is let's make a bus route a dice game, because it has dice. You know what's really cool about this? I gotta say, like, it has this in the lid. So when you roll dice, ah, it's nice. It's not too obnoxiously loud. And man, I really like this. The baby's crying again. I, I feel like the dice did it. Sorry, sorry, sorry everyone. Now, I don't think Let's Make a Bus Route is a bad game. I just really like this one more. Um, I play a lot of two-player games, me and the lady. I play a lot of two-player games here, especially from the last few months, but I really like this one. And the boards uh, and this are far sturdier, and it comes with two maps. One side is Kyoto, and the other side is Mars. It's a little weird. Uh, I know some reviewers didn't like it. I don't know what they're talking about. I think it's cool. Why not be on Mars? And it's, the specialty of Mars is that you go to these corners and you warp around. But it's pretty much the exact same game, except done with dice instead of cards. Dice version also has these special abilities that you can unlock that allow you to help mitigate the dice and do different things or re-roll. And I find that really, really interesting. The solo rules are actually quite good as well. It's a little bit weird because you play through 12 rounds as blue and then you play through another 12 rounds as red. And that can be a little bit weird because you're playing the game twice. But I mean, Brass is one of my favorite games. So if Brass can do it, why can't, why can't this do it? I'm really curious about this though, that this says one, which makes me think that, oh, it's gonna be a continuing series. I really like this one. I prefer it uh, to the original, but I also like dice more. The components I think are better and sturdier. Uh, the dry erase boards are a lot sturdier and they don't really bend at all. So if I had to choose between these two, I'd probably get this one. And that has been my number three. Number two is Wind the Film. And oh, oh. I love this game, but it does not love me. It's, it's kind of like that girl in high school, you know, you're just, you're just madly in love with her and she just does not know that you exist. Now, Wind the Film, not Wind the Film, come on. Wind the Film is an excellent uh, two to four player game. It scales really well. I think out of all his games, this one scales by far the best. 
the sun is going down and you a photographer going around the city taking lots of photos of everything. You'll be doing some drafting on the center table and then you're putting your cards into your hand. And just like Bonanza, the order of the cards is important. And then you're going to wind the film. You're going to take one card and then put it somewhere else in your hand. And then you're going to start taking these cards and placing them down on the table. Now, there are different suits in this game, and so you're going to put your purple cards in one line, your blue cards in one line, your green cards in one line. And you can go from ascending to descending. However, you have to go in increments. Like, you can't ascend too quickly, and you can't descend too quickly, or you'll get punished badly. And the reason why I say this game does not love me is because ugh, the choices in this game are all bad. Like, it's just bad to worse. And it seems like the winner of the game is the one who can mitigate those bad choices uh, the best. But what I love about this game is that there are different suits, and each suit has a different card, and each card has a unique picture on it. And what's even better than that is that if you're a big fan of Sasuke and Sashi, you will look at the art and be like, wow, that's the cover of of Glen Coffee Lab, like, oh, that's a picture of the elevator. It's like, oh, it's the boys from Take the Acorn. And, oh, it's the boys from Take the Acorn, like, at a bar. It's like, oh, it's a picture of a bus. Oh, it's a picture of a guy roasting coffee. A lot of the art from uh, Takako Takarai is in here. And I understand he probably just repurchased the, uh, repurposed, not repurchased, repurposed the art. But when you play it, it's almost as if, like, a greatest hits of Sashi and Sashi, like it makes you feel like you've entered the Sashi and Sashi universe. It becomes really, really charming. The end game is a little bit fiddly with some weird rules and I kind of wish that I was just streamlined a little bit more. But man, Wind the Film is a fantastic, fantastic game. And if you can get your hands on it, I cannot recommend it enough. And that is my number two. And number one is Remember Our Trip. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I love this game. This is by far the most unique game that Sashi's ever done. Now, technically he didn't really do it by himself, like Sashi and Daryl Chow from Origami Games in Singapore. They co-designed this together, but Takako Takarai still did the art and it looks absolutely fantastic. I've heard other reviewers call this quirky. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. But it's definitely very unique, not just for this publisher in particular, not just for all of Asia, but just out of all the games that I've ever played or owned, this feels very unique. I don't know another game that kind of plays like it. In this game, you are people trying to remember your trip and you're drafting these little memory tokens and you have your own board, your opponent has their own board and in between is a shared memory board. And you're placing down these tiles here and you can kind of create a majority in there that matches the main memory and your personal memory. Then you can solidify that and you place buildings on there and you score lots of points. And it's very weird. And I, I want to say that it usually takes half a game before you have that aha moment of oh, oh, that's how you play this game. But once you reach it, it's just mind blowing because there's nothing else out there in the market quite like this. Personally, for me, and this came out in 2019, and 2019 was, I'm gonna say, the best year of board games in Asia. 2019 is when lots of Asian publishers were going to each other's conventions, and it was just amazing. And this is one of the things that came out of that year. And that's because Sashi, Sashi is from Kyoto, Daryl Chow is from Singapore, and they met together, in Taiwan and they printed this game here in Taiwan. Cool! And if you notice, like there is there are two maps in this game. There's one of Kyoto, oh that's where Sashi's from, there's one from Singapore, and that's where Daryl's from. And so there's a lot of personal emotion that goes into this game, and I find that absolutely fascinating. And what's so cool about this is that fans have made their own versions of this. Like if you go to BGG, you'll see people that did like New York and London because they love this concept and they want to see more maps of it. 
and I want to see more maps of it. I just love this game. In fact, you know, I really don't like blue and orange put together. I know they fit together, but I just look at it and I'm just like, no, no, go away, go away. But I look at this box and I'm like, yes, give me more. And that's why I remember our trip is my personal favorite. Wait! Now, before you go, I want to try something a little bit different. Here you go, you can see all the games in chronological order. But I want to throw out a few awards. Which do I think plays the best solo? I'll go with Coffee Roaster. If I had two people and the only two people wanted to play a game, ah, I would go with probably, let's make a bust out the dice game. Three, I would go with Remember Our Trip. But there are four people and they want to play a Sashi and Sashi game, oh, you better believe we're playing Take the Acorn. Travel. Which one's the best for travel? I gotta go with Wind the Film. I think it just scales the best, two, three, and four. It always plays well. Which game is the most approachable that I can get people to play the easiest? And that's in front of the elevators. Easy game. Play a card, draw a card. Play a card, draw a card. Done. The best one overall, in my opinion, is Remember Our Trip. Most innovative one, by far, Remember Our Trip. The hardest game to get. I'm actually going to say it's Let's Make a Bus Route is the hardest one to get, which is kind of funny because it's the most recently released. Are these games easy to get? And actually, yes. In our last video, we did our first Rarest Rare Gems video where I talk about really hard to find games from Asia that are just absolutely amazing. Sashi Sashi has grown in popularity. So if you want to pick up a Sashi Sashi game, I'm going to tell you now how to get it. If you want to get Blend Coffee Lab, no problem. You want to get Take the A Chord, no problem. You want to get In Front of the Elevator, no problem. You want to Remember Our Chip, no problem. These four games are all on the BGG Geek Store. So you just go in, log on, and buy them. Pretty easy. And they do ship internationally as well. So let's make a bus route. If you want to get this one, you're in luck. Because Yellow, the French publisher, is doing this. And they're calling it Get On Board, and it comes with two maps, London and England. It has this great 60s look to it. I mean, Coffee Roaster has already been out by Stronghold Games, so if you want to get this in North America, woof, it's pretty easy. Wind the Film has been re-released by Matigo, one of the biggest publishers in Europe. You won't find it on the name Wind the Film, it'll be called Photograph. I think they call it photograph because most people understand what a photograph is and I think kids today will see what's wind in the film. I don't get it. Man, I just feel old. <laughs> I remember when kids took photos like this, like they would mine, like, but kids just do this now. And it looks like they're lighting cigarettes. I don't know. So, easy to get. Easy-er to get. And that leaves us with, well, let's make it bust out the dice game being the hardest one to find. But, if you're not, Sashi and Sashi has an international online store on their Tumblr page. Yes, you heard that right, Tumblr. Tumblr just, just has a higher penetration rate in Japan. Maybe they're the only country using it. I don't know. But if you go to Sashi and Sashi Games uh, on Tumblr, you will find this here, and I believe the international store should still have this in stock. Well, those are my favorite Sashi and Sashi games. Well, those are all the Sashi and Sashi games. I love Asian board games. But I like gamers more, so comment below, let me know what your thoughts are on these games. Have you played any? Are you looking for some? Did you learn anything in this video? Find me on social media, I'm everywhere at Cardboard East. And send me a photo of something that you've played or something that you've liked. Once again guys, my name is Jay, I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. Thanks for watching.